Hello friends, welcome back to Wow IAS. Welcome to the discussion on daily MCQ. Today is 9th of August 2021 and now we are going to discuss 5 current affair based MCQs. So let's start. But first let us discuss the question that was asked on Saturday and the question was which of the following rivers is not the tributary of Yamuna? Which is not the tributary of Yamuna? A. Chambal, B. Kane, C. Betwa and D. Gandak. And some of you have given the correct answer as well. So it was just a minute, yeah. So it was Absur Kureshi and Pankaj Verma who gave the correct answer. And the correct answer here is D. Gandak. Gandak is the correct answer. Now we will see the map of Yamuna. So Yamuna river, if you see, the Yamuna river starts somewhere in Uttarakhand, you can say. It starts near the glacier of Yamunotri and it flows through all the valleys. Okay, and finally it meets Ganga at Allahabad. It meets Ganga at Allahabad. And the point, the meeting of point is known as, the meeting point is known as Triveni Sangamam. Triveni Sangam, right? And Yamuna, if you see, it is the largest as well as the longest tributary of Ganga. It is the largest and the longest tributary of Ganga. And Yamuna here, you can see the path it is taking. So it is flowing all with the way through Delhi, Agra and all. Okay. And if you see the tributaries of Yamuna, the Banas, Chambal, okay, Betwa, Kane, Sindh, so all of these are the tributaries of Yamuna, tributaries of Yamuna. And now if you see Gandak, Gandak is another tributary of Ganga. It flows from Nepal to India and it is a tributary, it is a left bank tributary of Ganga. Okay, so this is all the information that we need to know. Now let's move on. And guys, as you know, daily we upload 5 current affair based MCQs and their solutions in a PDF format. To make the best use of this initiative to ensure that you get a maximum score in your prelims because as you know the competition is increasing day by day and you always have to be on your toes when we talk about prelims okay so do make the best use of this initiative by joining our telegram channel and the telegram channel details are there in the description right okay now let's move on the first question consider the following statements with respect to pm daksh yojana first one it is a national action plan for welfare of the target groups of Backward classes, scheduled classes and Safai Karmacharis. Second one, the scheme is being implemented by the National Commission for Backward Classes, the NCBC. And you have to choose the correct answer. A1 only, B2 only, C both 1 and 2 and D neither 1 nor 2. So if you see this PM Daksh Yojana, this PM Daksh Yojana actually, this is a national action plan for welfare of targeted groups of backward classes, scheduled caste and Safai Karmachari. The first statement is right. But if you see the second statement, it is given, it is being implemented by the National Commission for Backward Classes. This is wrong because this is being implemented by the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment. Okay, so the first statement is right, second statement is wrong. So A, one only is the correct answer. So recently, the Union Minister for Social Justice and Empowerment has decided to launch PM Daksh portal and PM Daksh mobile app. So that's why this was in news. It is the national action plan for marginalized persons of SC, OBC, EBC, etc. And this program, uh, this program actually engages with the skilling of Safai Karmachari, including waste pickers, transgenders and women, so that they can engage in more self-employment activities. The main purpose of the scheme is to increase the skill levels of the targeted youth by providing them the long-term and short-term skills so that they can gain some employment. They can even, get, they can even start a self-employment. Okay, and the scheme is implemented by, as I told you, the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment and this scheme would be implemented through three corporations, namely the National Scheduled Cast Finance and Development Corporation, National Scheduled Class Finance and Development Corporation, sorry, National Backward Classes Finance and Development Corporation and National Safai Karmachari Finance and Development Corporation. So all these three combinedly implement this scheme. Now let's move on. The second question, which of the following examples of the glacial erosional landforms so glacial erosional landforms first is sirk second one esker c arit and d deforge so you have to choose the you have to choose the correct answer okay so here if you see this glacial erosional landforms here the correct answer is c one three and four the sirk arit and deforge all of these three are the part of the glacial landforms so here i've given all the uh, all the glacial landforms 
Actually, according to the recent st study conducted by the Wadia Institute of Himalayan Geology, Dehradun, which is an autonomous institute under the Department of Science and Technology, the Pencil Gumpa Glacier, the Pencil Gumpa Glacier located in Zanskar, Ladakh, is retreating due to an increase in temperature and decrease in precipitation during the winters. So that's why this was news. Now, if you see different glacial landforms, the cirque, which is the hollow basin which is cut into mountain ridge and it has steep sided slopes on the three sides and open end on the side and the flat bottom when the ice melts the cirque may develop in and turn into a lake because it's a it's a basin cut into a mountain ridge next one glacial trough the original stream cut valley further modified by the glacial action that is known as glacial trough and it is a u-shaped valley and it is a very mature stage of valley formation you can say since glacial mass is heavy and slow moving the erosional activity is uniform horizontal as well as vertical and a steep sided and flat bottomed valley results which have u-shaped profile and next you have the hanging valley which is formed when small tributaries are unable to cut as deeply as the big ones and remain hanging at higher levels than the main valley as discordant tributaries a valley carved out by a small glacier you can see small tributary glacier that uh, joins with a large carved out by the much larger glacier next one arid which is a steep sided and sharp tipped summit next one is horn which is a ridge that is acquired horn shape because of the glacial activity that cuts into form more than two sides and the default which is a steep sided narrow entrance like feature at the coast where the mainstream meets the coast and the deposits are generally common in Norway, Greenland and New Zealand. Next you have the glacial deposit depositional landform. If you see, Esker is that type of uh, landform, the glacial depositional landform, which is a winding ridge of an unsupported deposition of rock, gravel, clay, etc. And the Eskers resemble the features of an embankment and are often used for making rods. Okay. So here in this diagram, you can see all the different types of glacial landforms, the hanging valley, erid, horn, tarn. Okay. So the cirques, glacial trough, all of these are part of the glacial landforms. You can just go through it once. Okay, now let's move on. Third question. He was the creator of Indian Society of Oriental Art and first major exponent of the Swadeshi values in Indian art. Ganesh Janani, Bharat Mata, the victory of Buddha are some of his famous paintings. His idea of modernizing Mughal and Rajput paintings eventually gave rise to modern Indian art, modern Indian painting, which took birth at his Bengal School of Art. You have to identify the personality about whom this question is talking. A. Arvindu Ghosh, B. Abhindranath Tagore, C. Nandanlal Bose and D. S. C. Bose. So the correct answer here is B. Abhindranath Tagore. So recently 150th birth anniversary of Abhindranath Tagore was celebrated on 7th of August. Don't confuse guys, this is not Rabindranath, it is Abhindranath only. Abhindranath Tagore is the nephew of Rabindranath Tagore and is one of the prominent artists of India back then. He was the first major supporter of Swadeshi values in Indian art and Abhindranath first created the Indian Society of Oriental Art and later on uh, later on went on later went on to establish this Bengal School of Art. And the main aim of this school was to counter the English influence on the Indian artist. That is the main aim. And uh, he did this by incorporating Indian elements in his artwork and achieved success when British art institutions gave in and accepted to teach and propagate his style of works in the organization. And his style of modernizing Mughal and Rajput paintings eventually gave rise to modern Indian painting, you can say. And this he, and uh, this took birth at his Bengal School of Art. Okay, and some of other information I've given here, you can just pause and go through this ones. Okay, all this information, right? And his famous paintings are also given here, like the victory of Buddha, Bharat Mata, and Ganesh Janani. So these are the important things. Now let's move on. Yeah, fourth question. Consider the following statements with respect to the public accounts committee. First one, the public accounts committee is formed every year with a strength of not more than 22 members and all 22 members are drawn from Lok Sabha alone. Second one, its chief function is to examine the audit report of CAG and uh, CAG after it is laid down in the parliament and we have to choose the correct answer A1 only, B2 only, C both 1 and 2 and D neither 1 nor 2. If you see this first statement, so here it is given that all the 22 members are from Lok Sabha. This is a wrong one because in this 15 are from Lok Sabha and 7 are from Rajya Sabha. So the first statement is wrong. But the second statement if you see, the second statement is right. The second statement is right. So here the correct answer will be B2 only. B2 only. So the public accounts committee recently headed by the Congress leader Adiranjan Chaudhary is going on a four day tour to, to Sri Lanka, Kargil, Leh and Dras in connection with the 2019 CAG report on high altitude clothing, 
equipment, rationing and housing for the army personnel. And this public account committee is formed every year with its strength not more than 22 members where 15 are from Lok Sabha and 7 are from Rajya Sabha and they have an office term of 1 year and they are appointed by the Speaker of Lok Sabha and th since 1967 the chairman of the committee is generally selected by the selected from the opposition you can say. It is its chief function is to examine the CAG report which is submitted in the parliament. Right? Now let's move on to the next question. Yeah, small information is, uh, so you can say this is a con committee of accountability which asks the questions to the government because the CAG report generally audits everything what the government does and this committee examines the CAG report. Okay, now let's move on to the fifth question and the fifth question is, which of the following is the chief characteristic of mixed farming? A. Cultivation of both cash crops and food crops. B. Cultivation of two or more crops in the same field. C. Raining of animals and cultivation of crops together and D none of the above. So mixed farming if you see, mixed farming means rearing of animals and cultivation of crops together. So C is the correct answer. C is the correct farm. This is not a mixed farming. So in mixed farming animals also will be cultivated and crops also will be grown. Okay. So C is the correct answer and it's a previous year CSE question of 2012. Okay. Now let's look at the question of the day. And the question of the day is, which among the following is the longest river in China? A. Sangbo, B. Yellow River, C. Yangtze River and D. None of the above. So do give your answer in the comment box and tomorrow we will discuss this question. Okay guys and um, before I leave these are our initiatives. We have launched Vision Prelims Test Series Summary, Vision Mains Test Series Summary, Vision Monthly Magazine and Vision PT365 Summary. You can, down, you can uh, check all of this quality in our Telegram channel because these, uh, these documents aim to make your preparation more easier and they they want to actually they aim to increase your prelim score because they will definitely help in your revision because multiple times revision is very key for prelims so that you retain the maximum knowledge and these documents will definitely help you in that and it will also help you to cover things in a much faster way okay so do join the telegram channel to make the best use of these initiatives and you can check it and, and as well as subscribe as well okay so all the details are given in the description you can just check it and that's it guys for today. I'll see you again tomorrow with 5 more MCQs. Till then keep studying and stay tuned. Jai Hind.